our call to commemoration by Dr. Bernice Albertine King, CEO of the King Center. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. This is a glorious and a grand and a great day. And on behalf of the King Center, we thank you for joining us for this annual commemorative service. We're on our way to 50. Amen. Now, just uh, a note of reference, only Aunt Christine is allowed to call me Albertine. As we think about this day, and especially as I think about it, my mind goes to a question that I am often asked, especially during this time. And that question is, what would my father say about the state of affairs if he were here today? Uh, the other day, I uh, heard Zanona Clayton speaking uh, down at our state capitol for their uh, annual commemoration of my father's birthday. And she said, he would say, what is taking you all so long? Well, when I thought about it, uh, my mind went back to 2013 when Time Magazine placed my father on their cover for the 50th anniversary edition in recognition of the I Have a Dream speech. And on that cover, uh, the caption said, Founding Father, but it was the subcaption that intrigued me. Uh, it said, Architect of the 21st century. Well, of course, I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me because I had just hit 50 years of age. And he was 32 years shy of living in the 21st century. Yet he was being viewed as the architect of a century he never saw or never lived in. When I, when I contemplated what architect means, I, I realized they are responsible for providing us with a blueprint and a design. A blueprint that serves as a guide or a point of reference for uh, whether you are on track or not. Uh, well, my brothers and sisters, when I think about the state of affairs in America, it seems to me that since Dr. King's assassination, we've kind of failed to follow the blueprint. In his last book, Where Do We Go From Here, Chaos or Community, which I recommend everyone get uh, and, and read it from cover to cover. Uh, Daddy left us with a, with a blueprint, uh, which addresses things such as affordable housing and criminal justice reform and education equity and fair employment and a living wage and human dignity and how to abolish what he called the triple evils of poverty, racism, and militarism. And he did it by subscribing to his nonviolent philosophy, not merely as a tactic, but as a way of life. In other words, nonviolence 365. So if we're going to build a, a better world and create the beloved community, then we must refer to and utilize this blueprint provided by us, to us, by my father. But somehow, it seems as if we've allowed things to distract us. Instead of following the blueprint, and instead of dealing with real life challenges, we've gotten distracted with reality shows. And the cares of the world, and, 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 and like Atlanta Housewives, and TV dramas like Empire and Scandal, let me call the list. Uh, 
We've gotten distracted by music that tears down instead of uplifts us. Uh, uh, yes, we've been distracted, y'all. We've been distracted by Madison Avenue techniques and selfishness and greed and materialism and lust of the eyes and lust of the flesh. And so while we have been distracted, new voting rights restrictions have been created. While we've been distracted, our educational system is the worst in the world. While we have been distracted, carbon footprints are growing and global warming is at control. While we've been distracted, environmental injustice toward the poor is happening where schools and parks are build, being built on toxic wasteland and it's going unnoticed and unpunished. While we're being distracted, lead is being placed in some people's water. While we've been distracted, uh, institutions designed to protect the people have allowed a few individuals with no regard for human life to hide behind a badge of honor. While we've been distracted. While, we, while we've been distracted, you all. We've allowed North Korea to launch nuclear testing and we've allowed an education to prison pipeline while we've been distracted. We've allowed more ethnic cleansing and radicalism and extremism to grow in our world while we've been distracted. We're about to create right here in this civilized society, the wild, wild west with guns. not all. While we've been distracted, we've allowed a Supreme Court justice to insult our intelligence and have the audacity to think about turning back the clock 60 years or so. Y'all, we can't keep being distracted. Because if you're not careful, we're about to allow a reality show host to bully himself into becoming president of the United States of America.
season. We will reap if we faint not. Don't give up. Don't you quit. Don't go weary in well-doing. When the heart gets tired of doing the same thing, it dies. When an athlete gets tired of practicing and exercising, the team loses and they potentially get kicked off of the team. That's why you can't grow weary. If a farmer gets tired of pulling out the weeds and to protect the soil, harvest time will reap nothing. When mothers get tired of going to the school and participating in the PTA and correcting the wrongdoing of a child, and uh, in terms of them respecting you and others, it makes it easy for the child to grow up and rebel against society, not respect the laws, and maybe end up in prison. When you get tired of going to the polls, because your candidate does not win, then we end up with lawmakers who never lobby for our interests. If Coretta Scott King had grown weary in well-doing, we would not be celebrating the life and the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. So I say again, do not be weary in well-doing, for in due season, you will reap if you faint not. And if daddy were here, I think he'd still say, we shall overcome. Deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome someday.